Well, good morning. Oh, there's so much more awake than last night. I, last night, I said good evening, and it was like, well, I'm glad to see you guys this morning. You know, one of the things we forget is how even to people who don't believe what the Bible says is true, so many of them still believe that a lot of things in the Bible are important and effective. And today I want you to look, let, let me give you an illustration, okay? Today we're going to talk about living and active. And uh, how many of you, okay, now this is a confession of sin. You know, the Bible says, confess your sins to each other, okay? So we're just going to, we're going to do a public confession, okay? Rodney, you ready for a public confession? No. How many of you, <laughs> no, how many of you have ever, oh, wait, wait, time out. <clears throat> In honor of Dave today, yeah. See if I can read this one. I broke one of my fingers at work today. On the other hand, everything is okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dave, if you're watching, that's for you, baby. So how many of you, here's the confession of sin time. Y'all were like, I can't listen to the joke because I'm worried he's going to have us confess sin. So here we go. How many of you, and it's many, I know it's many, so just get ready. Just get your hand ready. How many of you have ever, ever eaten or partaken of McDonald's food. You've partaken of, I see those hands, okay, thank you, thank you for sharing today. Uh, Jesus, Jesus sees you, you're forgiven. All right, so, so here's the deal. The truth is, we've all eaten at McDonald's. Have you eaten at McDonald's like I have when you had a busy day and people were calling you and so I'm on the phone in my car, which I love. I love the radio phone. Uh, I don't necessarily like the voice to text because I have sent people weird things in voice to text. Um, uh, I, I've told them things that I didn't want to tell them, huh? Oh, you, yeah, he has too. Well, I know about his, but anyway, so, you know, you, you, but, but I love being able to talk on the phone. Now, here's the problem with talking on the phone. It's, you can't pay attention to everything, even if you're ADD. And so I'll never forget one day I was talking to somebody on the phone about something important. And at the same time, I said to them, hang on just a second. I've got to order my lunch. And so, you know, may I help you? Uh, yeah, I'd like a number one large size with a Diet Coke. Not that I've been there enough to know exactly what that is. Chick-fil-A, number one diet lemonade, large waffle fry. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, so it's not open today, though, so you're out of luck. So anyway, so... I'm going through the drive through I get my food, I'm still talking on the phone, I think I'm headed to Orlando, so I'm driving probably on the interstate or something, and I reach in the bag, and they have not given me my fries. I'm reaching around, the, the french fries are not there, and I am aggravated, I mean I just left McDonald's five minutes ago, and, the, and I can't do a thing about it, I can't go back, I'm like, these employees have not, wait a second, but, but there's a fry box in here. Why is there a fry box? Oh, and there's a fry in the bottom. And there's salt on my shirt. I have eaten an entire order of McDonald's fries. You ready? And forgotten all of, didn't even notice. Apparently I was shoving like potato chips or popcorn, just shoving McDonald's. Now don't, please don't visualize this. You need to eat later. But I thought about this, and I thought, you know, when we don't value something, we do that. We just shove it in our mouth like no big deal. And, you know, you've probably done that at the house and stuff that doesn't really matter to you. But I love a good roadhouse steak. And so I've been to roadhouse, and when you eat at roadhouse, you, you cut up the steak. Oh, it's delicious. It's delicious. They're going to sing in the middle of, to somebody in the middle of you eating, and you stop for a minute. But as good as a roadhouse steak is, one time I took Jenna and Kyle to New York City and I told them, if you will eat cheap the first three days, then the last day we will go to whatever restaurant you want. And we went to this famous Italian restaurant and I'll, I'll never forget, we ordered these family platters and you just got two things and it fed all of us. And if you've seen my son, that was, that was a lot. And so um, we, if you've seen me eat, <laughs> uh, so anyway, and Jenna said, they said, how do you want your steak done? Jenna said, well done. And he said, no, no, really, how do you want your steak done? She said, well done. He said, no, no, really, how do you want your steak done? She said, well done. He said, okay, medium rare, and walked off. We got this steak, you put it in your mouth, and you just stopped, 
and you went, oh, man, I don't know what they did. Maybe they sang to the cow every day, gave it massage. I don't know what they did, but this is the most amazing steak. I've, I mean, my mouth is watering thinking of several years ago that steak. Now, here's the thing. Too many times when we read God's Word, because we have such easy access to it, we read it like McDonald's fries. And if we're honest, sometimes we read it, and before we even leave the room, if somebody said, so what did you just read? We'd go, uh. So here's the point of today's message for you, regardless of where you're at. If you're a Christian, my hope is that you will today learn to savor God's word more. That you'll learn to desire, and, and as the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. To, to learn how to read His Word. And if you're not a Christian, I hope that I'll give you some little things today that maybe you'll look at it and you'll go, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Because here's what I believe. I believe there's truth in God's Word that when you read it and spend time in it, that God will use it to change you. And when you're a Christian, the power of the Holy Spirit gives you the power for the Word to actually speak to you and, and come alive. So we're going to look today at three ways to empower your life in the Word. And we're going to talk about pondering, practicing, and plant. And the whole point of this is to help you to grow hungry, to savor God's Word. Number one, first what we need to do is ponder the power of the Word. Listen to what it says in Psalms 119. Psalms 119 is all about God's Word. We don't know who the psalmist is, but here's what he says. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth, and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. Now, when I read this passage, it says it's like the heavens, and I can almost see the psalmist walking outside and looking up. Last night after church, I said, oh, it's almost time for a rocket launch, and everybody walked out, and we had no idea where to look. We knew it was that way, but we didn't know which that way, so we were kind of looking, trying to figure out where does it launch. I said, well, some have launched here, and some have launched there, and I don't know where this one's going to launch, and I was totally wrong. It didn't launch anywhere close to where I thought, but I've even got a picture of everybody at one point just looking up like, wow. No matter how many launches you see, it's just, wow. You can see the psalmist standing out in a field, or even at that time, you could stand in the city and look up and look at the heavens and say, wow. And the psalmist is saying, God's word is as steady and as firm as the heavens. We should look at his word and understand and ponder, wow, look what God's word can do in my life. You know, too many times we're arguing about a passage that people want to argue about a, an unsure passage instead of realizing that 99% of what God's word said is so clear and so obvious. You know, when the Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free, boy, we've discovered that in our lives a few times, right? And so... Then the psalmist says this a little bit later. He says, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding. Now, I'm going to come back to that Hebrew word in a second, so just put that word on the shelf. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path. You've probably heard that one. I'll come back there too. And I've taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous law. What is he saying? I'm hungry for God's word. It's like honey. You need to realize they didn't have uh, uh, all the sugar that we have today. I mean, we got sugar. They put sugar in stuff. They push it and put sugar in. Have you noticed this? When's the last time you, you tried to go on a diet and you looked at the dressing that you put on your salad and realized that it had more calories than a Big Mac? If you haven't done that lately, take a look at your salad dressing. It may be that you'll never lose weight on your diet because you just ate 300 Salad calories, because you put two teaspoons of salad dressing. By the way, two teaspoons, who does that? What in the world? should be like 12 teaspoons. Like multiply. I'm sorry. Am I talking too much? All right. So, so here's the truth. The truth is that he said, your word tastes. And why? Because I gain understanding. And this word for understanding means discernment. Let me tell you what discernment is. And you tell me whether or not we need discernment today. 
Discernment is being able to tell when you see two things, which one is right and which one is wrong. It helps you to choose what the Word says, that next step on your path. By the way, people come to me all the time and say, I wish God would just tell me what's going to happen down the road so that I can make a choice now. And, but the Bible says very clearly, your word is a lamp, not a spotlight, not a bright light, a lamp. And guess what? To my feet. I'm like, could you not be a lamp to like 12 steps? Ahead? No, no, a lamp to my feet. What does that mean? God wants to give you the next step. And when we follow the principles of his word, when we begin to understand not just what the Bible says, but we let it soak in and let the Holy Spirit speak to us as we notice our attitudes and our actions, he changes us. And what does he do? He helps us to discern not what we need to do a year from now, not what we need to do for our retirement, not what we need to do today. Today. Too many of us are worried about tomorrow. And Jesus said, give us today our daily bread. Wouldn't it be great if he said, give us the whole week, the whole month, the whole year, the whole life, our daily bread, right? That wouldn't make any sense. Number two, so we ponder and then we practice his word, practice his word. I was talking to somebody this week who's gotten off track. When we talk about discernment, they were somebody who followed God for a long time. And this week they were just confessing to me, I've just kind of slowly gotten off track. And here's where I am now down the road. When you don't spend time in God's word and day after day you just follow your own desires, before you know it, you're going to be way over here. And all of us know somebody, all of us know somebody that we can remember when they were on track, when their life was going, when they seemed to be pursuing the right things. And what happened? They just made a choice day by day, a choice day by day. By the way, guess how you get back on the path? You make a choice day by day. God, I'm going to follow your word. I'm going to do what you say. And sometimes you, you do that, and then guess what? You mess up. <laughs> and then guess what? Get back on the path. Don't say, well, I failed that one time, so I guess getting back on the path is a dumb idea. No. You say, God, lead me back home. John, Jesus said this in John 15. If you remain in me and my words, listen, remain in you, ask the Father what you wish, and it will be done for you. By the way, <laughs> everybody focuses on those, like, 12 words there, and they miss the rest of the passage. So let me read the entire thing, okay? Basically, why, don't I, why can't I just pray and get whatever I want? That's what they think that means. It doesn't mean that at all. But anyway, here it continues. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. What does that mean? Love, joy, peace. See, too often we're focused on the gifts or the getting instead of the fruit. You go through a hard time and you say, God, I don't know why you're letting this happen to me. Give me what I want. And God says, yeah, but the fruit is patience. And I'm like, yeah, I am not driving on I-95 or I-4 anymore, right? And, and so the truth is what he's teaching us and giving us fruit in the middle of difficult times. So he says, if you remain in my word and my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my father's glory that you bear most fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the fathers loved me, and I love this, so I love you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Did you catch what he says? He says, as much as God loves me, I love you. What if you just chewed on that today? What if that was the only stake that you took from here? How in the world? Because most of us would say, well, how can God love me as much as he loves Jesus? I didn't say that. How can Jesus love me as much as God loves Christ? There's no way. Yeah, but Jesus said it. If we allow that idea, if we allow just that one piece of Scripture, and we spend time like a good steak. Mm. By the way, if you're a vegetarian, we spend time like a good carrot. I don't know what the favorite vegetarian vegetable is, but whatever your favorite vegetable is, you go with that, okay? So when I say steak, you just substitute broccoli or whatever you're... Let me give you an idea of what God's word is like sometimes. You know what this is? You ever seen one of these? It's a probiotic. If you've never had, how many of you have ever eaten a probiotic or some yogurt? Anybody in here love yogurt? Yogurt's your favorite. Yeah, I don't like yogurt that much, so I drink these. Now, why? Because when I went in the hospital, you know what they did? They said, you got bad stuff. We got to kill it all. So we're going to put you on this stuff that'll kill everything. But the problem is it kills not only the bad stuff, but the good stuff. So you need a probiotic. 
So they said, you need to not only do a probiotic now, you ought to do it. And so now I've decided I'm just going to do a probiotic forever, right? Why? Because when you are being attacked by bad things, a probiotic can help you to overcome that. Listen, you live in a world that constantly is going to try to fill you with negative thoughts, with thoughts about how God doesn't love you, with thoughts of fear and anger. By the way, if you watch the news, if you even watch ESPN today, it used to not be this way, but even ESPN now is fear and anger. Oh, how dare that coach do that? And then you go, yeah, if I was in that position, I'd never do that. And now we have arrogance and pride, and right? All the things. I would have never taken that player out, or I would have never let him go out there with a concussion. I can't believe that. I mean, now we're suddenly professional owners. No. We watch the news, and, and they tell us what we should be mad about this week. By the way, have you started writing it down yet? What should you be mad or fearful about this week? Every week, just write it down. You're going to have a new one every week. Every week you have a new one. You're supposed to be mad about this this week. Oh, I didn't know. Thank you. What is that? That's the enemy attacking you. And God's word is the probiotic. And the Holy Spirit says, take every thought captive. I mean, do you ever have wrong thoughts? You do. You know how I know that? Because I was on top of a ladder. I'm... 14 feet in the air, which is really far for me. You know, for Marcus, that's like reaching above his head. But for me, it's really far, right? And so I'm on this ladder. I've got a screw. I pick the screw up. I put it on the end of the thing. I'm trying to drive it. And the screw falls to the ground. And immediately, out loud, I say, idiot. When I say that to somebody else, if they dropped a screw from 14 feet in the air, holding with one hand, almost falling off the ladder, you know me real well, Carl, Right? No. And so as soon as I said it, I thought, that's wrong. You have to take those thoughts captive. Some of you have things that you say to yourself that aren't right. Some of you have things that you say about others that aren't right. And by some of you, I mean me. Right? You got it, right? You ever had somebody pull out in front of you and all of a sudden you've judged them for their entire driving career? And then they pull into the parking lot at church and you're like, oh. That happened three weeks ago. I'm just letting you know. All right, so here we go. James 1 is true. I'm just, you know, if we confess our sins. All right, James 1, 21 says this. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. Does anybody want to disagree with that passage? And humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Don't merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So act on it. When you learn something from God's word about loving people, go out of your way. Listen, this hurricane was a great time for you to help somebody in your neighborhood. It didn't have to be even a big thing. But you could at least meet them because people had to be outside because it was too hot in their house. So you at least got to say, so, so how every week is God going to give you opportunities to live out his word? He will. If you pay attention, say, God, would you show me how to live out your word. Let those roots grow deep. Number three, plant his word and grow. Plant his word and grow. You ever been at a restaurant and somebody goes by with food and you go like this? Now, if you haven't done that yet, you need better restaurants. When we were on a vacation a few years ago in uh, North Carolina, this is sad that I still remember this. This tells you, I'm confessing how much I love food, apparently, but if we love God's word this much, you guys would be in great shape, right? They go past us with this huge pretzel, homemade pretzel up in North Carolina, Hendersonville. This place has these amazing pretzels. They've drizzled clarified butter and bacon bits. Bacon bits. Mark, bacon bits. They walked by, you could smell it as they walked by. Kyle looks at me and goes, we're getting one of those, right? <laughs> Maybe two, right? Got the pretzel, started to, oh my goodness. Be to this day, best pretzel I've ever had in my life. Ever. Unbelievable. Listen, I want you, when you spend time in God's word, just like when the steak 
Just like with the pretzel that you start to say, God, show me what you want me to see. Help me desire it like I desire that pretzel that Pastor just talked about. Some of you are still stuck on Chick-fil-A because you've got to wait till tomorrow, right? When we get a desire for something and we want it, we allow God's word to do it and say, God, I want your word to grow in me. Let it be planted deeply. Listen to this in Isaiah 55. What a great verse. As the rain and the snow come from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields its seed for the sower and bread for the eater, listen, so is my word, talking about God's word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, let me tell you where some groups get this verse terribly wrong. They think that what this verse says is, if I say something, it's going to happen. And so they go into this whole thing about positive confession. If I say the right thing in the right way. Now, there's nothing wrong with being positive and being encouraging. But just because you say something doesn't mean it's going to happen. Now, God can put something on your heart. Now, here's the truth about God's word. When you read God's word, when you speak his word. By the way, when you're sleepy, can I tell you one of the best ways to have your devotion is to actually stand up and read the Bible out loud. I mean, don't wake up your family. You don't need to read it like Charlton Heston. But, but right? But, but read God's word. It says it won't come back void. What does that mean? It means when you read God's word and you allow it to sink in your life, what does it do? It changes you. It changes how you think. If you don't have a reading plan, I, one of the things I encourage you to do to help you, if you're struggling with discernment, Read a proverb a day. There's 31 proverbs, so you can read a whole proverb every day. There's some wise sayings in the proverbs from thousands of years ago that still impact us today. So many wise things in there. Listen to what it says in Hebrews 4. For the word of God is what? It's alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. What does it do? It judges the thoughts, but not just the thoughts, and the attitudes, oh no, of the heart. That means that when you say something and you're like, oh, yeah, sure. And you walk away and you go, what a doofus. Or out loud you say, yeah, okay, that'd be great. It says God not only judges what you just said, the Bible doesn't just judge what you said. It judges the attitude you said it with. So there's times that we get prideful. There's times that we get arrogant. There's times that we literally think we're better than other people. Especially if you're on Facebook, you're like, I can't believe they did that. Right? Because I'm better than them, is what you're saying. And so when we begin to do that, we begin to take those thoughts captive. The Holy Spirit makes us sensitive to that through God's word. And then finally, listen to this last passage for the day. 2 Timothy 3. All scripture, I love this, is God-breathed. The word for Holy Spirit means breath. All scripture is God-breathed, is useful for what? For teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This passage is talking about equipping somebody. So when I think about equipping, I think, you know, it's like us trying to get healthy. And I never knew how to work out. I would go to the gym and work out and just kind of go from machine to machine. I didn't know what I was doing. And I had a friend who every day, he would say, okay, Monday we're going to do this. Tuesday we're going to do this. Wednesday we're going to do this. And this was years ago now. And when I work out today, you know what I do? Monday I do what we did. Tuesday, I do what we did. Wednesday, I do what we did. All through the week, I say, I'm going to do those weights that we did. Work those muscles that we worked on those days. Why? Because that's how I was trained. Listen, some of you have never learned how to read scripture. Start with the daily bread. By the way, the daily bread has, I think, two or three passages from this sermon. I read it this morning. I'm like, are they reading my future sermon? How is this working? Right? I read it today and I thought, you don't, they don't need my sermon, just read the daily bread. And last night I encouraged them, I saw people picking up the daily bread. And I think it's awesome. That means people who've never read the Bible this morning picked up their daily bread, opened it to read the Bible, and it was the verses I used in the sermon. They had to think I somehow did that. I'm not that smart. Right? Robert, not, I'm not that smart. Okay. So daily bread maybe is a good one. Um, there's also version Bible, which you can do on your phone or an app. There's tons of resources on there. If you're a person who'd rather just flip your Bible open to somewhere, let me at least give you a little guidance. Start with one of the Gospels. What are the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Start with one of those. Read about Jesus. Then go from there. You ready? You ready? Go to 1 Corinthians. 
and just start reading some of Paul's letters to the early church. Why? Because there's a thousand things in those that are inspiration to us today, thousands of years later. Whatever you choose to do, can I tell you what to do? Be equipped for every good work by doing what? By training, by spending time in God's Word, by allowing it to soak in. Do not McDonald's french fry God's Word. Okay? Best steak of your life, God's Word. Or if you're vegetarian, best broccoli of your life, God's Word. Spend time in His Word and let it soak in, and it'll change you. If you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, you can do that today. If you're watching online, you can send me a note. One of the things in God's Word, Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, you can do that today. I'll talk to you after the service. If you're here today and you're a Christian, but the truth is you've lost the hunger for God's Word. If I'm talking to you about God's Word, you instantly go, oh, hey, make a new commitment today. God, I'm going to spend time in your Word every day. Maybe you put it on your calendar at whatever time you wake up in the morning. Read your Bible. Spend 15 minutes. Just spend some time in God's Word. Let it soak in each day. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for your Word. Lord, thank you that your Word not only speaks to us, but it points to you. The purpose of your word is not to worship your word, but the purpose of your word is to focus us on worshiping you so we can know who you are. And Lord, just like you said, we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. I pray, Father, that as we spend time in your word today, that you would set hearts free. Lord, those of us who believe wrong things about you or about ourselves, would you set us free? Father, those habits, those things that we fall into, would you set us free? And Lord, I pray if anyone is here or watching online that doesn't know you, that today would be the day that they surrender to you. Thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.